On this Memorial Day, we honor America's servicemen and women. And tonight, you're about to meet soldiers who formed a brotherhood so strong while serving in Afghanistan, they found nothing could replace it. A new documentary takes us inside the brutal and harrowing battles they fought so far from home. And while the fighting was tough enough, in some ways they say coming back was even tougher. Here's ABC's Brian Ross. What happened in this ruggedly beautiful, faraway country became known as the Other War. Even though more than 2,300 Americans have so far died in Afghanistan in fighting as fierce and as difficult as anything ever seen by the U.S. military. Hey, did you see him? No, I don't see him. Yeah, it's frightening. I, mean, I think if anybody told you they weren't scared, you know, they kind of, they kind of you, but it's scared. You know that that fear is there, but you, you just put it away. He's down in the drop! Most of the fighting and dying in Afghanistan happened in remote places that few Americans ever heard much about. Give him some down low. There you go, good. Like the area around the U.S. outpost called Restrepo in the six-mile-long Korangal Valley near the border with Pakistan. Some 42 Americans were killed in the Korangal Valley, and for those who served here with them, today is very special. I think Memorial Day is a very uh, powerful day for them. This is the day where they really think about, like, my God, you know, that guy died at 22. You know, what a sacrifice. You know, it's a, it's a very solemn time for them. Over the course of more than a year, journalist Sebastian Younger, along with photographer Tim Hetherington, were embedded at Restrepo. They produced award-winning reports that aired on ABC News and a feature-length documentary called Restrepo that was nominated for an Academy Award. And now, with American forces being drawn down in Afghanistan, Younger has a follow-up film called Korangal that provides a rare and surprising insight into why some American soldiers may actually wish they had never left Restrepo. When you shoot that thing in a rocket world, it just, it's a giant machine gun. What's not to like about a giant machine gun? Soldiers miss war. What, what is it they're missing? And I, I really wanted to make a film that got into the soldiers' minds and helped them and the country, obviously, understand what that experience is like. Is there anything about this you're going to miss? Shooting people. <laughs> it's always fun shooting. Is there anything you miss about Restrepo? <laughs> the firefights, I ain't going to lie. I think a lot of us kind of miss that, uh, that adrenaline. Americans have a kind of war fatigue but not these soldiers. It was the most intense thing they'd probably ever done. And, you know, of course, they don't miss getting shot at, and they don't miss having to shoot at people. But what they do miss is that brotherhood of combat. It's not replaceable back home. And, and I think that's, that's the sort of secret to understanding why soldiers can miss something that's as terrible as war is. There's nothing else like it. All right, we're getting engaged again. At times, with scenes set to a pounding oh. rock score. Oh. The men of this platoon seemed like boys acting out a violent video game come to life. <laughs> Combat's a lot of things, and it, among other things, it's intoxicating and very high adrenaline, and those guys were jacked out of their minds in that firefight. But by the same token, there's other moments in the film and in real life where you're in this sort of like you know, moral free fall into this sort of darkness. Like, what are we doing? We're killing people, we're dying. <laughs> there you go. Woo! Get some! For a while there, I started, I started thinking that God hates me. And like I said, I'm not religious or anything, but I felt like there was this hate for me because I did sins, you know, I've sinned, and uh, although I would have it done it the same way, everything the same exact way, I still would feel this way, you know, I'd still, and that's a terrible thing of war. Any honest film about war ca captures those two, those two truths. It's very, very, combat's very exciting, and it's profoundly disturbing. That comment, you did what you had to do, just drives me insane. Because is that what God's going to say? <laughs> he did what he had to do. Good job. Punch you on the shoulder and f say, welcome to heaven. You 
No. I don't think so. The mission of American soldiers in Afghanistan over the last 13 years was to go after the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, considered vital to national security. For these soldiers, that meant leaving the protection of their hilltop base and heading down to the villages below to win over the hearts and minds of the villagers. When we left the wire, most of the guys were scared and what was going through their mind was they, hopefully I don't get to die tonight. You know, hopefully I, I live to see another day. They're going to talk to you guys today. But about Younger's the film reveals the seeming futility of the mission roads and the contempt in which each side regarded the other. We come in, they're going to take what they can get from us. And then as soon as the Taliban comes in, they're going to give them what they want. But they're a little more scared of those guys than us. So I think they play both sides and they'll be friendly to your face. But, you know, in the end, they're, they're just kind of in the middle trying to survive. You know, this whole go in there and act like their friend thing doesn't work. Hearts and minds goes out the window when you see the guy shooting at you and then he puts his wife and kids in front of him knowing full well that we won't shoot back. They put some women and children up on the roof. And then, uh... The guy that shakes our hand takes the 10 bags of rice we give him for his family and the school supplies and the coats and immediately walks up the mountain and shoots an RPG at us, walks back down and smiles the next morning when he's walking his goats. His heart, his mind. The U.S. withdrew most of its forces from the Korangal Valley some four years ago. Younger says in the eyes of American commanders, the mission at Restrepo served a larger strategic purpose in stabilizing the area and holding the Taliban at bay, even if the soldiers in the Korangal Valley didn't always see the bigger picture. Once they're out there, you know, your country's an abstraction. Once you're out there, what you're really, really doing is fighting to survive and to help your brothers survive. And that's really it. And I think that's been true for millennia. I think the, the, the Greek soldiers on the, at the walls of Troy didn't really care about Helen, right? You know, they, they were fighting because they were there with their brothers, and that's what was happening. And some of the most telling moments in Younger's film come in between battles, waiting for the next mission or the next attack. What does courage mean? I, I would ask them that. Like, what does courage mean? What does it mean to be brave? Bravery, to me, as an example, would be something along the lines of uh, someone who goes out of their way despite the, the very likely potential of dying and risking his life to, to uh, protect another one. We didn't talk about that word very much because we didn't feel what we were doing was was bravery. Every single person that got shot over there, they didn't worry about themselves one bit. All they asked about was, how are my guys doing? Like, Sergeant Rice, when he got hit, he's like, Where, where's my team at? Is Solo OK? Is Jackson OK? Is Vanderburg all right, you know? When Sergeant Padilla lost his arm, his arm was missing. He, he had shrapnel on his face. And he was just asking if everybody was OK. That, that, that's bravery. Private First Class Cortez's unwavering courage, aggressiveness, and leadership while under fire were decisive to his company defeating an enemy attack. Private First Class Cortez's performance reflects great credit upon himself, Task Force Bayonet, Combined Joint Task Force 101. Hey man, how'd that feel? Awesome. Yeah? You felt oh, yeah. good? I felt good. Hey, you guys look proud up there. Well, of course, we accomplished something. Yeah. We got <laughs> recognized for it, so I'm, I'm happy. Start crying or anything? No, no, I'm not. I'm not sentimental like that. I'm, I don't break down in it. I'm a soldier, through and through. <laughs> but there were times when they did break down, when the tears flowed. Yeah, they're all trying not to cry, and of course they fail. And um, yeah, yeah, it's very powerful. When we return on this Memorial Day special edition of Nightline.
turn now to our profound story about a band of brothers formed during the war in Afghanistan. The American soldiers who say they became family while struggling to maintain faith in their mission and fight for their very survival. So why do so many of them say they miss it? And how did they learn to cope with the grief? ABC's Brian Ross takes us back into a journey of hope. Journalist Sebastian Younger and his partner Tim Hetherington put their lives on the line to report from Afghanistan, spending more than a year with the soldiers of Battle Company in an outpost called Restrepo. We both were almost killed out there. Tim broke his leg in combat. I, I got blown up by an IED. Uh, we paid, you know, we paid our price too. And I think by the end, the guys were open and honest with us because we'd been through an awful lot of this with them. As Younger portrays in his new documentary, Korengal, the American soldiers formed a brotherhood that ironically left many feeling empty when they left Afghanistan. Did you have your own withdrawal? Did you miss, miss Battle Company I, when you came home? I miss, I miss the guys. I, you know, I'm 52, I'm starting to get over the combat thing, but I miss the guys a lot. It's, you know, in a weird way, as dangerous and scary as it was out there, it was also one of the happiest times of my life. And I think that's true for a lot of those guys too. How, how so? There's no stress, like there's no emails to deal with, no bills to pay, no fights with your girlfriend, no real life to deal with. It's very simple, just stay alive. Tim called it um, a sort of you know, paradise for men in a weird way. It's like none of the hassles of real life and all of this male bonding, which is pretty intoxicating to men. Tim Hetherington had his own intoxication with war. I need to get close to the action. I mean, that's as a cameraman in, in combat, you're, you, you need to be close to where it's at. If Hetherington himself was scared, he never showed it. On this mission with Battle Company, the soldiers got word that the Taliban were tracking them as they pulled back to their base at night. It was a sense that we were now going to be hunted, and that was a, not a great feeling. As the shooting began, Hetherington kept rolling, steady as always through the chaos of battle. And we ran up to the ridge expecting there to be fighting, and instead we came across the scene uh, of the scouts and of uh, part of 2nd Platoon that had suffered uh, casualties and the grim discovery involving a beloved company leader. <laughs> the men were distraught, and as close as he was to them, Hetherington did not hesitate to do his job as a journalist, while the platoon leader got his men back into the battle. Hetherington's work with Younger in Afghanistan won wide acclaim, and is seen again in this latest documentary. But soon, Hetherington was on his way to his next war, Libya, where at the age of 40, he was killed. His partner, Younger, was devastated and learned a painful lesson about war and loss. I mean, I was supposed to be with him on assignment, and I, last minute I couldn't go, personal reasons, and then he got killed. And I twisted it around in my head, and so, like, I should have been there to help him save his life or protect him. I know it's not even rational, but I was in, I mean, an enormous component of PTSD is survivor guilt, and I... I'm still, I can get incredibly emotional, like out of the blue, out of nowhere. And um, I think I'll probably have that my whole life. So Younger treats with special care how the men of Battle Company dealt with their grief. They take responsibility for the tragedies that happen to their brothers and they live with it their whole lives. And that's one of the reasons soldiers don't want to talk about war is that they'll end up crying at the dinner table and most grown men don't want to cry at the dinner table. You know what I mean? So they just avoid the whole topic. The Restrepo outpost was named for one of the company's medics, Juan Restrepo, killed in action in the Korengal Valley. When the soldiers said goodbye to him, they struggled to hold on and find a way to somehow move on. Is it a good thing that this place has been named after him? Up here? Yeah. yeah. Hey! Hey, sir! Staff Sergeant Warty! Hey, sir. BFC Restrepo. BFC Juan Restrepo. BFC Juan S. Restrepo. Ready? Hey. Fuck. Ready? Hey. Fuck. Ready? Hey. Fuck. 
we're all sitting there just no one talking to each other, just upset. And then uh, when you, like, you, before you deploy, you have this blue book you fill out. And it's just a bunch of information about how you want to be buried, who you want notified first, who you want to notify your family. And then how do you want your memorial? So we picked out a song. You get to pick out what songs you want played. So we're all really upset. And all of a sudden, the song, I Will Survive, comes on in Spanish. And he'd request that if he died. And we all just started laughing. Our thanks to Brian Ross for that report.